Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here, welcome back to another Division video. And in today's video, I am back with 269. What's up, man? What's up, dude? Sweet, and we thought we would talk about Last Stand today. I know Survival has only just dropped, and for some of you guys on PS4, of course, it's not out just yet. But I thought we'd start looking forward to what's next, kind of talk about what we would like Last Stand to be, because right now we have no information at the moment, but based on the fact that kind of the way the game is right now, what people want to see, things that we haven't yet had in the game, thought we'd be kind of cool to like compile some ideas, plus I'm away this week anyway, so let's have a chat. Um, yes. So I think before we kind of do, before we dive into Last Stand, I think it's kind of important to kind of take stock of where we're at right now. Survival has been great for... The survival is, I mean, in my opinion, I think you're probably going to agree, 2-6, is the best expansion Division's had, right? And it's kind of restored a lot of goodwill for players. Like, Division's been through a lot of ups and downs, and we can see by, like, the Steam player numbers and other player numbers, people are coming back to Division. Um, let, let, let's say actually patch, because there's only been two expansions, so... True, It's okay, not really sorry. that hard to beat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Okay, yeah, true, patch, patch. Fair enough. But, um... Yeah, so obviously, the, you know, the latest patch restores some goodwill and they're, you know, they're making some good progress with that. It's nice to kind of see that Massive didn't, you know, didn't give up, nor they, you know, they've kind of weathered the storm and, you know, tried to keep going. And I think they're in a really interesting place right now because having got a lot of goodwill back, they can't afford to mess up like anymore, right? If, if like the next expansion ends up being a letdown, they're going to be in a very dangerous place where people have been forgiving up until now, but people probably won't be forgiving again, right? So I think it's important to kind of state that Last Stand has to continue the momentum they've got for survival and you know it has to, you know they have to smash it out of the park right so in that respect i've kind of compiled a list of what i want to see and what i don't want to see and i think for both of us the thing at the very top of the list something we have been asking for from day one is raids right i mean raids well, proper, is... it's not even just raids just a proper end game like something to use your weapons in that you min maxed out yeah and stuff like not, not these incursions that are like one room and just rehashes of like main missions exactly that, yeah yeah i mean I, th so, I, th I think that's a fair point yeah i mean like the game right now i mean this is also interesting an interesting point you and i play a, a lot of survival right now and i haven't even spent too much time at the moment working towards my main build because there's not really a reason to it. Sure, they've raised the gear score. Sure, they've added MP3 NPCs that are level 34. But there's no real reason for me to use that build, right? So yeah, to your point, there needs to be end game. And if, if, if it's not raids, it needs to be something, you know, appropriate. But raids are something that I feel would work so well in this game. And, you know, they don't necessarily have to be on the scale of like World of Warcraft with like, you know, 20, 30 people or whatever. We can have like an eight-man raid, just something where you can get two teams of four, grouping up, going into a slightly more challenging activity that has a combination of both, you know, AI difficulty and mechanical difficulty. I think this is one of the important things. I think things. that's the difference, right? Incursions wouldn't be so bad if they weren't just wave-based uh, yeah. modes and, like, just basically glorified horde mode. If it was mechanic-based, then mm. it would be all right. So we don't want Massive to just put in a raid that's just an extended incursion. No, no, no. With, with loads of stuff and loads of different rooms. We want, like, mechanic-based um, stuff. Like, oh, you need to split into groups of two and go here and one person needs to handle this crane and drop it on this person yeah. in front of this person to give them cover and move along. And there's loads of like little stuff that people need to do and figure out how to defeat a boss. And it needs to have that uh, that kind of structure where yeah. there's a boss, there's a uh, clear section, then a boss, then a clear section, then a boss, then a clear section, then a boss, and then a clear section and then a final boss that you yeah. kind of work up to that's not the same character models as the dudes in the single player campaign exactly. just with like a little red armband to dictate that they're a different person or a higher rank it needs to be like a bespoke character model for this particular raid yeah no completely agree and i think yeah definitely to your point of people split into groups the important thing about raids for those of you guys you know i'm sure a lot of you guys have played different games that have got them but if you haven't one of the important things about raids is that People in your team have to adopt certain roles. In the game right now, I mean, you could say to a certain extent, like Clear Sky, you have a person to carry the box. Or you in, like, you know, Dragon's Nest, you have a couple of people to press buttons. That is roles in the lightest possible sense. But I'm talking, like, in a raid, people would have, you know, be like, you know, you are here to do this job. You are here to do this job. People need to, like, be responsible for their roles. And that's what makes it fun. You know, it can be a checkpoint thing. Raids are typically things that work on a weekly reset. It can be, you know, you get your loot for the week. You can do it in checkpoints. So if you guys have got... You know, if you're not necessarily the kind of people that can sink hours into the game, you can still do, like, you could do the first encounter, the first boss, checkpoint, you know, come back tomorrow and do that and whatnot. But I think that's super important. And I think there are, to a certain extent, elements... I mean, you know, there are elements like this that exist in-game, right? I was thinking the other day about 
some of the stuff you get in raids, you know, even simple things like traps, right? Underground now has that. We have areas where there are, there are, there are bombs planted, right? Or there's like things that shock you on the ground. There are like fire, um, there's like parts that, are, you know, the ground's on fire, you need to put it out with water. And although that's very, very simple, they're sort of things that can be, could be put into like a labyrinth to create like a raid encounter, right? Like, or not in a raid encounter, sorry, like a raid sort of setting. You want to have like traps on the way to where, you know, where you need to go and whatnot. And I think one of the problems they're presented with at the moment, and you know, I, I appreciate this, is they're trying to keep it within the Clancy universe. They've got people, they can't, you know, it's not like Destiny where they can just bring a big alien in and be like, all right, shoot this alien's seventh head. Fair enough. But there's still a lot of stuff you can do. I mean, when you consider the agents have got some pretty high-tech stuff, like Seeker Mines and, you know, yeah, these, like... that's what I was saying. Things. It should just be, like, if you've ever watched, like, Resident Evil or played a Resident Evil or a couple of new ones, they've got these, like, massive underground laboratories that they have yeah. going on, like, secret bases, kind of like, um, even in, like, Independence Day, uh, Area 51-type places where you can go down and there could be, like, a massive encounter down there that you need to go to, down there to retrieve some tech. I was thinking about it like a narrative thing behind that they could have been like there's a like uh ai down there that can is just gonna straight up just nuke the city because it's yeah. seen that the containment's gone too wild so they're just gonna nuke it and you've got to go down there and turn it off before you get down there and then yeah that would be um some way that they can fear up but that's just my stupid idea i'm not a uh, narrative design or a mm. uh, writer so they can think of something much better to actually fit in with the um Clancy yeah. and the Division universe. And I mean, you could also, you know, you could also even go to go as far as sort of like have a, a very basic kind of mech suit. I'm not talking like, you know, Gundam style mech, but I'm talking like kind of the sort of mechs that they might use to like move shipping containers around. That's, you know, yeah. that's within just the realms of... Just an exoskeleton yeah, or something exactly. like that. Nothing like uh, outlandish that will go out there, but they're definitely something that would... Uh, um, surprise players, at yeah, because they've and seen also, everything already. If you think about some of the stuff they're using game right now, I mean, like you know, having now fought against the hunters and seeing you know they can actually use abilities. I mean, something simple to like a raid mechanic. Imagine if you had like a raid boss that had effectively signature skills, right? But to bring like the mechanic side of it into it, the whole sort of phase side. Imagine if they used what is like the boss's equivalent to survivor link, right? But when they have that, you can't deal damage to them. So for like you know a period of like a minute, they've got this barrier around them, and you know you can't do anything, right? You, I mean, you can't fight them. You have to then go and do the next stage of the fight. That way, they can still work abilities in. It still kind of falls within the believability of you know the whole agent scheme, the abilities and whatnot. It's not like suddenly bringing like space aliens down. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I think I think it's fair, fair to say, and I mean that's probably something we'll have to like discuss much more in depth later on because this isn't specifically just a raid video. This is, of course, you yeah. know, other things. Of course, if you guys have any ideas down below for what you'd like to see in raids, but I think it's fair to say a large scale, big yeah. group there, activity. There's, there's like really cool stuff that they can do even with the abilities, right? Because they could take away one of your abilities and then have like, say, if there's six people in there, three people will need to have. Uh, one of their abilities swapped out and that yeah. gives them a debuff and everybody that stands stands in a circle gets like once yeah. they proc it gets a buff or something to damage the boss there's like oh, you mean cool like, stuff they yeah can you mean like sort of like specific specific abilities you have in only available in that raid it, yeah only in yeah, that raid like that you pick really them cool. up and before you go into the room you swap it out and then it's just like there and it does like additional bonus damage to whatever the boss's name like Jimmy T the boss <laughs> or something and then, Simon yeah. Boris <laughs> yeah Simon Boris yeah that's fair enough okay well that's cool so, I mean, definitely, I think I think it's fair to say we'd like to sort of see raids, and if not raids, then some sort of challenging endgame encounter that we can actually use our gear sets on, right? Yeah. But I think also on top of that, you know, there's more to it than just that one activity, because I think it's important to realise that, you know, the division caters to different types of players, right? So there's not just going to be that one activity. I think it would be awesome if they did expand on survival. Like, we spoke about this before. I'll link it down below if you guys haven't seen the chat that me and 2-6 had about what we'd like to sort of see in survival. But basically, we want to sort of see a slightly more hardcore... Um, survival mode that's a little bit more akin to Battle Royale and this isn't to take away from the existing modes the existing modes will remain the same but now that we have like PvP and PvE options you can search for you know there will be nothing wrong with adding a third option which is like a much more hardcore version in fact someone in um, our Twitch chat the other day had a really good example they actually spoke about the potential for maybe adding a survival world tier like you actually select it and it like globally creates this sort of survival environment it obviously wouldn't Im impact your your main character but that's a, that's a definitely an interesting concept but regardless i think survival needs to be expanded because survival is great right now has a lot of great components but i think you're going to probably agree that i don't know how long it's going to last um in its current state yeah exactly like it's fun and stuff like that but you only really do it for loot as a as a peer like i don't know i kind of want more yeah. to it like a more competitive side leaderboards as well like it'll be yeah. nice <laughs> like, yeah exactly yeah. that's the thing i mean yeah we when we when we play like modes like battle royale and like armor or you play h1z1 you don't play for loot right you play literally just to win 
But in survival, that winning doesn't quite feel as exciting. So yeah, I yeah. think I think it needs something. I think I think survival is really great for the rest of this year. Don't get me wrong. But I think going into the new year, I feel like if they want to kind of keep that mode going, and that is one of the modes that I think will give this guy, they will give this game life, right? If if survival was a little bit more competitive, it's probably one of those things that you could see people playing for the next six months, right? Or like you know on on stream and whatnot. But on yeah, top of that, I, I think okay. that's kind of the the point, though, right? They must look at Twitch and must look at yeah. Um, steam and look at the steam numbers going up and that the fact that h1z1's up there armor's up there mm. and these guys are doing these battle royale game modes and culling's kind of up there as well um and they it seems like they kind of did this as a test to see how it will go they need to lean into survival and make it yeah. a bit more hardcore for the players that want to do it because like um i was watching total biscuits video yesterday he said yeah this is like the first triple a kind of battle royale if they lean exactly. into it and make it a good thing what they need to do is like essentially just if it's possible servers probably only support 24 players if they can up, up the player count and make it um yeah make it more hardcore they they're onto a winner they're onto yeah. a winner that's it exactly that's yeah and even, and even <laughs> if they up, up the player count like i mean to yeah. what we said before at least if they had like a more of a br kind of notion that forces people into the similar locations at least you're gonna yeah. create a more, lot more encounters right yeah so yeah but moving on to the next point from there like to the point where i appreciate there are a lot of people that don't necessarily want the hardcore pvp experience there are a lot of other players out there and i think it's super important as well for last stand to have pve activities right we're at this point now where there can't just be another update where it comes out it gives us a higher gear score more gear and we again have to go and do hvts kill the roaming bosses we can't do the same thing like for the umpteenth time, right? So I think Last Stand, because also bear in mind, we don't know what happens beyond Last Stand. You know, I'd like to think there's a year two, given they call this the year one content plan. I'd like to think there's a year two, but we don't know. You know, Last Stand could be the final thing we get until whatever's next. Maybe there's Division 2, who knows? So whatever comes in Last Stand kind of needs to keep everyone happy, right? It needs to satisfy the PvP audience, satisfy the PvE audience. So there needs to be some sort of additional PvE activity that people can enjoy. This is different to like the end game, um, and I think also one of the more one of the more important things we kind of need to speak about is there needs to be a map exp extension, right? Like we have been. Yeah, I think that's the problem. Like yeah. it's kind of static and stagnant now. We need kind of new areas to explore that people can see. I think around this time, uh, Destiny was getting some map expansions, right? Yeah. Was it? Yeah, yeah, new, yeah, oh, yeah. Because we got like the. Um the dreadnought and stuff like that right yeah, so yeah. yeah yeah i think i think definitely because i mean there's you know there's so much stuff like north of the dark or like north of the map and i think also it's important to state you know this needs to be a map extension for the dark zone and the open world for both players but you look above right there's like central park i mean that in the game's narrative is supposedly a huge graveyard just of like nothing but dead bodies but it's also a massive open expanse which could be great for like you know imagine imagine survival if they're going to add more playlists and then suddenly the dark zone gets a whole lot bigger but they yeah. do introduce the heroic idea of, you know, closing people in and forcing them in, then you're going to have some really, really awesome encounters. So that, yeah, I mean, I think people want to see it, right? They just, they enjoy the world, but there is only so much you can stay in the same same area yeah. before it gets old, right? Start adding new factions in as well. Like, don't yeah. just uh, stay, stick with the ones that we're familiar with at the moment. Everyone knows the LMB, everyone knows the cleaners, everyone knows the Rikers, everyone knows the, the uh, rioters. Well, uh, adding something else that's surprising. I don't know, like a gang, yeah. another gang mob or something. <laughs> like the, well, there was there's also... always there's all re references to like Russian weapons in the game. Bringing mm. some Russians that come in to like steal the tech from the LMB or something. Yeah, that That'd could be cool. cool. I mean, I think it, I think it was also. I'm pretty sure. Um, people in the comments can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure in the the book, the Division book, there's also reference to um, some like this faction well, no, exactly, not exactly a faction but a group of people that are effectively living in the undergrounds that have become like cannibals to try and stay alive don't get me don't get it twisted i do not want zombies and they have said categorically there will never be zombies in game i don't personally like zombies but the notion of you know the, these people living in the underground in the underground tunnels and to survive they've basically become cannibals i mean yeah. that imagine that as a faction it would be like you know you have this guy you suddenly go underground and this guy just runs towards you like a crazy man i mean that would be that could yeah. be interesting. I mean, it I guess that's not, it's not it's not a zombie. That's just like a flipping hectic man. Isn't yeah, it? exactly. <laughs> yeah, zombie, right. and they should also lean more into like the hunters. Right? I mean, the hunters have been some of the best things to fight. They are. I mean, they go down quite pretty easily, and once you get used to them, they're actually not too challenging. But compared to everyone else, they are the they're the, you know they're the NPC that are probably going to mess you up above all else, right? And they are um you know if they can kind of lead if there was a whole faction of people like hunters that move like hunters, play like hunters, that's going to be a lot more exciting, right? yeah definitely yeah so 
The only other thing I have on my list is actually under the what I don't want to see section. And quite frankly, it's just another incursion, right? I mean, I, the only thing I don't want to see in Last Stand, and bear in mind, I don't mind an incursion well, if they get it right. I incursions as they stand. Yeah, as they stand. been in previously. Like, um, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm going to say something like superly like rude here, but like people, uh, the designers need to understand that people it, it, it might sink people's times these incursions but i don't think people particularly enjoy them yeah, as well true. like if you're playing on the easiest mode you need to know that on the hardest mode if you only as a tester can your testers can do it um you need to try it out for yourself on whatever difficulty you find hard and try it out and see how fun it is for you to do on a weekly basis or even a daily basis to farm this gear that needs to be min maxed as much as possible yeah well, I, th I think the, I think the, the the weird thing about incursions, right? They're kind of this weird halfway house, right? They're not like they're not as quick and like well thought out to run through, say, like strikes in Destiny, but they're also not expansive enough to be raids, yeah. right? So they're in this weird place, like in limbo between, where they're neither one thing nor the other. And yeah. yeah, I mean, it's true. Like most people, most people like if ever if ever they've gone into incursions in the past, it was because in the previous way that loot used to work, you know, you would you'd have a better chance of getting the loot you want from that incursion. So when people used to farm striker and sentry, they'd do. Falcon Lost, etc. Right, so they kind of. I feel like a lot of people went into incursions much more of a like matter of necessity than because they actively wanted to. Right, people yeah. people go into the dark zone and do HPTs because they want to. People play survival because they want to. I don't think a lot of people. You know, I stand. I, I, I'm not speaking for everyone. Again, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm sure there are like people out there that do enjoy them. Personally, I don't enjoy incursions. Um, yeah. So yeah, if if in last time if they are going to add a new incursion, then I at least hope it they do change it you know, drastically and make them a lot more enjoyable, make them, you know, give them give them more of a personality, make them something that actually stands out and that's not just like a condensed mob rush, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely agree with that. But I mean, I mean that yeah. that is that is largely kind of some of the things that I would like to see. Definitely, for those of you guys in comments, it would be awesome for you guys to drop them down because one of the cool things as well is if we start speaking this early, I mean, I know, you know, we know full well that the developers listen to us. They listen to the community and if we start this conversation really early, maybe we'll have a much better chance. Yeah, they can get ahead of it. That's kind of why I wanted this video out, so that we can start yeah. this conversation now while they're pla in the planning stages rather than trying to be reactive to it in the development stages. So right now we're doing this. If you've got any ideas, put them down in the comments and we'll try and link it to the community managers, uh, Hamish and uh, Yannick and uh, Matt and... Gabe and uh, Antoine and uh, see if they can uh, send it over to the designers. These, these are just our ideas as well. So if, we, if you think our ideas are stupid, then um, it's just mm. our personal opinion. If you've got them down below, rather than gunning down what we think, what you should do is put your um, your ideas down below of what you need, what you want from the game in terms of that. Because we have a particular play style that we play and it might not be... Um, uh, applicable to you because we like group style content a lot of the time and I know solo players might want something different so fit that in and uh, put that down in the comments and leave that there below yeah sweet right well I think that's uh, unless you've got anything else to add to I think we've been uh, that's, that's pretty much a wrap for the time being so uh, right. we'll, uh, we'll obviously keep this conversation going and you know maybe what we might do we might do like a follow up maybe once we've uh, you know once you guys have put some suggestions down we might do like in a week in like a couple of weeks or something do like a follow-up and try and compile some of like the best community suggestions so that you guys have like a because you know while they do listen to forums and stuff like if you guys want a platform then we can at least try and make sure you're heard and whatnot so yeah we'll we'll follow up on this keep this conversation going because ultimately i want more content i want the game to to carry on because i love this so yeah but anyway thank you very much guys shout out to six for joining as well if you did enjoy it like we super appreciated comments down below and i'll catch you next time